Barely a week after we first heard that the Supreme Court is poised to overturn Roe v. Wade, and despite all that Republican guff about states' rights, there's already now GOP talk of a national abortion ban. In an interview with USA Today, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said he considers the discussion premature, but admitted if the leaked opinion became the final opinion, legislative bodies, not only at the state level but at the federal level, certainly could legislate in that area. So, yeah, it's possible. Most midterm forecasts are predicting Republican takeovers in both the House and the Senate, though whether Mitch McConnell would also wind up with a filibuster-proof majority is still unlikely. McConnell told USA Today that he would not blow up the filibuster for a federal abortion ban, but I'll believe that when I see it. Meanwhile, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is launching his counterattack, promising a vote to enshrine the protections of Roe in federal law. We are here today because we are not going to let a bunch of extreme Supreme Court justices or extreme right-wing politicians take away the rights of 100 million American women. So today I'm detailing my plans to hold a vote Wednesday to codify Roe into law. I will file cloture, which moves the bill tomorrow, and we will vote on Wednesday, and every American will see how every senator stands. That bill is dead in the water, though, thanks to the aforementioned filibuster. Still, I can't help but wonder, why did the Democrats wait until now, after the Supreme Court leak, to spring into action? They've had literal decades to prepare for this moment. Not to mention the fact that Schumer's vote is just a symbolic gesture. Democrats don't have enough support to actually pass the legislation. They couldn't even count on every member of their own caucus backing it. I'm looking at you, Joe Manchin. So as ever, fighting for basic rights in America can't be left to judges or lawmakers. People have to protest and organize. Activists have to lead the way and make some noise. One of those activists joins me now. Actor Sophia Bush has been a politically outspoken activist on many fronts, but in particular women's and reproductive rights. Her podcast is called Work in Progress, and you may, of course, recognize her from her film and TV work, including her current role as Good Sam on CBS. Thank you so much for coming back on the show, Sophia. Sorry it has to be under these circumstances. Tell us about the moment you first heard about the court's draft opinion. What was your visceral reaction to that leak, to that shocking news? Oh, Mehdi, uh, it's lovely to be back. Thank you for having me, albeit uh, on a not-so-fun topic. The, the opinion leaked and truly made me sick to my stomach and also made me angry because like so many other women and phenomenal male allies and people who have been out advocating for justice and equity, we have been saying this was coming. The Republicans have made it incredibly clear that they have no problem with America being labeled a global backsliding democracy. And one of the signals of a backsliding democracy is the reduction in rights for women. And they've been very clear about their plans all this time. They nominated Amy Coney Barrett for this reason. She lied in her confirmation hearing, as did Brett Kavanaugh. But for whatever reason, the GOP doesn't seem to care about that when it's happening on their side. And here we are, having been screaming that they were coming for abortion, that they were coming for birth control, that they were coming for women. And... They've made it explicitly clear. You just read Mitch McConnell's quote. They want to enact a nationwide ban on abortion, despite knowing that they will never ban abortion. They will only ban safe abortion, and they will sentence women to death for it. Sophia, you are a Democrat. You have supported and campaigned for Democratic candidates. Why do you think it is that Democrats are just now springing into action on this? Shouldn't they have been more prepared for this moment? We've heard warnings that Republicans would try and overturn Roe for years. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I've been using an adage for years. I, I don't understand why Democrats are showing up to a shootout with a pen knife when the Republicans have been showing up to a shootout with an Uzi. We are not playing the same game here. And I don't really know what decorum we're holding on to. I don't know why we respect the filibuster when, first of all, it's not in the Constitution. And second of all, the Republicans have been blowing it up to do everything that they please, including confirming Amy Coney Barrett, despite the fact that we understood what her record on Roe was. And despite the protestations of the American people who overwhelmingly support a woman's right to choose. The Republicans you've seen this week attempting to 
to enact bills criminalizing IUDs, basically saying that they don't want us to be able to prevent being pregnant, let alone choose when to and when not to be pregnant. They are trying to enact the death penalty in Texas for women who seek abortions. They are quite literally trying to take us back to times when women were meant to be the vessels for, and this is from Samuel Alito's paperwork, to uh, provide, quote, a domestic supply of infants. Gilead is here. The Handmaid's Tale is here. And all the while, Democrats are acting like we are having a civil conversation. We are not. And I truly don't understand why a progressive party is not being more aggressively progressive to protect its own voters and to protect the citizens of this country who, from time to time, vote against their best interests, but still deserve to be protected by the United States Constitution, and particularly the 14th Amendment, under which liberty guarantees a right to privacy. And that has been established by our own Supreme Court time and time again for decades. Sophia, what can ordinary people do right now to organize and lobby for abortion rights to be protected? And you mentioned decorum and the obsession with decorum. Mm -hmm. What do you think about protesters picketing outside of the justices' homes, which has predictably upset a lot of people on the right? I think it's ridiculous to be upset. At the end of the day, you have signed on to be a public servant and you are quite literally telling the American people that our own desires and the forward motion of our country doesn't matter, that it can be held hostage. That is not how America was designed. Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter to James Madison in 1789 saying that the Constitution needed to be rewritten every 19 years. Expecting it to last longer than that is, and I quote, expecting a coat that fit us as a child to fit us as a grown man. That quote is engraved in the wall of the Jefferson Monument in Washington, D.C. Our Constitution was meant to evolve. They gave us the specific instructions on how to do so, which is where amendments come from in the first place. The idea that we are to be held hostage by a document written generations ago and to deny progress to people who were not included in it, despite the fact that we understand as an evolved civil society that equality is either for all of us or for none of us, is preposterous. So I think it's incredibly important for the average voter and citizen to get mad as hell, to absolutely show up. These are peaceful protests. And I love that they, some of them were even organized by the Supreme, Ju- the Supreme Court justices, neighbors themselves, saying we are going to exercise our First Amendment right to say this is unacceptable. You do not get to hijack our democracy. On top of protesting, yeah. uh, if you're local to D.C., you can also go to bandsoffourbodies.org to find a day of action near you this coming Saturday, May 14th, is going to be a national day of action in support of healthcare access. And please, I would encourage voters to not think small about this. Regardless of whatever your personal feelings on abortion are, your personal feelings do not get to dictate the lives of others and their medical rights. And if you think it's going to stop at abortion, it isn't. They've been very clear that they are coming for birth control. They've been very clear that they believe states should get to decide on marriage equality, on interracial marriage, on all of the other long-standing settled law precedents on liberty and equity. It will not stop here. If Roe falls, the democratic principles of equality in America fall with it. So whether this is your issue or not, if you believe in equality in this country, we need you to show up and fight like hell for it. So show up on May 14th, call your senators and tell them that you absolutely expect them to vote and pass the Women's Health Protection Act this week. It was passed in the House and it is going to be voted on in the Senate this week. We need to apply pressure. This is our country. It is our government. These are our houses and we need to act like it. Sophia, just, we're almost out of time, but I have to ask, just listening to you speak there very passionately, very eloquently, you are more outspoken than most celebrities. You lend your time to a number of causes. You clearly know your stuff. I have to ask, do you have plans to run for elected office at some point? You know, I've long loved being an advocate. I've loved being able to put my journalism degree to good use as a storyteller. I think I, I get to kind of bridge um, the worlds of public engagement and advocacy. But uh, particularly after the last administration, I figure if we're electing people from TV, then I don't know, maybe I'll throw my hat in the <laughs> ring eventually. I have some uh, I have some personal goals, you know, including starting my own family on my own planned time, thanks to my health insurance. Um, 
that feel like things I'd like to do perhaps first before I start spending my time flying back and forth to DC, but I do like it there. I do like getting to see you in person. So if, uh, if the adage, if not us, then who applies to me, then sure, I'd, I'd sign up to help because at this point, I think it's really on all of us.